Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, the podcast for all things Mecha. Jump ship incoming. Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, episode 5. My name's Rob. I'm Brian. And I'm Chopper. And we're here again to talk Mecha and Super Robots and what else? Not Transformers. Not Transformers, <laughs> who are, uh, are not par- technically par- Mecha, but are kind of... But we could talk apparently. Transformers. There, there's a, a group within Transformers Prime called Mech, M-E-C-H. Oh, <laughs> or is that Mensch? They're just that Mensch. <laughs> <laughs> that, tra- that transforms a Mensch. <laughs> it's got the, I think Clancy Brown is oh. the voice of the main guy for that. So that's pretty cool. sweet. Clancy huh. Brown is cool. Mm. Well. This is the next episode. We have some exciting things to talk about this time. And uh, we should have an interesting uh, Mech Bay. We'll, we're going to uh, talk movies. That'll be fun. Anything mm. else we should talk about here? You can go to our... Uh, buy some t-shirts because they're cool. I love my t-shirts. Woo! Yeah. And, pretty and nice. I drink my coffee out of my mug all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's just a cool design. You don't even have to uh I think actually we sell one that's just the uh head. So you don't even have to you don't even have to uh support oh, our really? show. Yep, just get the head. <laughs> I didn't know that. Nice. And Merchandise. Merch. And uh other than that, yeah. Join the face group, Facebook group because we uh do talk and show off a lot of our cool stuff there. And if you're not on Facebook, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's stay still, strong. Still stay public. strong if you're not on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask, ask me personally, and I'll send you sh- pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's about it. We'll get to the dropship. Sound good, guys? Yep. Sounds good. Let's get on board the dropship. Dropship landing. Welcome to the dropship. We're uh, working on some stuff. Who shall I throw it to? I'm going to sh- throw it to Brian. Brian, you working on anything? Uh, less than I should. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've got that problem where I've got many projects now. Um, and including I still got my Gurren Lagon project that actually like sadly has not moved much. Um, but, uh, I've, I've been slowly assembling the pieces. Uh, I believe last time I mentioned, uh, with, with the advent of, uh, the Vanguard. Uh, tabletop game from, from Mantic Games and, uh, and the, the craving to make a, a mecha in a fantasy setting. <laughs> uh, I have been slowly, uh, accruing parts for this monstrosity that I'm planning to build. Um, for, for those that are familiar with 40k, I'm gonna, I've got kind of the legs and, and torso of the Eldar, um, I think it's Wraith Lord. So they're the big Eldar, um, uh, mech walker. It's got, it's a, a sleeker, uh, model, sleeker frame. Um, kind of thin, all things considered. So I won't be able to put a whole lot on top of it. Um, but it, it really kind of fits the aesthetic that I'm going for, which is kind of a, a big kind of, uh, you know, magical mech knight kind of thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm planning to, to trim off a whole bunch of it so that it doesn't, look exactly like a, a Wraith Lord and everything. Uh, I, I do want it to be, you know, really kind of unique and stand out amongst itself and and be one of those things like, what did you make that out of? Because it won't, you know, something that's not just readily apparent that it's, it's one thing, it's it's multiple things. So um, that's been been fun. Uh, in fact, as we were gearing, gearing up for the show, I was digging through parts and pieces and uh, printing off wireframes of, uh, <laughs> the, the outfit so I could draw outlines over the top. Probably gonna experiment with, uh, some more green stuff on that one. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's, that's kind of the big thing, uh, on, on my, my mech related docket. Uh, still haven't really broken out my, the Gundam model kits that I've got. Um, been, been, uh, You're working on, on the trap. Yeah, oh man, I'm by, I got so many <laughs> miniatures now that I need to get painted up and whatnot. Oh yeah. So I'll be doing a lot of that. 
But cool. that's uh, that's pretty much what I'm working on. Yeah, I can't wait to see your your, uh, your uh, fantasy mech. It's that's a cool idea. So that's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Pat, you got anything going on? Uh, again, not too much. Uh, work has taken over my hobby time. Well, <laughs> Priorities. Know, I, I hear Priorities. You, I hear you. <laughs> the ho- the, unfortunately, the work I do is hobby related. Uh, mm-hmm. but it takes up that, and it's not mech. But in the meantime, I try to freshen it up a little bit, so I keep uh, taking breaks. And so, uh. I'm tapping into the pile, and I brought out my uh, Mospita, the blue one. Stick Bernard, if you're a Mospita, or Scott Bernard, if you're a Robotech fan. Either which one. But it's the blue one. Uh, I've I've primed it now, and I've been uh, looking at the box and uh, looking through my Mecha paints and deciding which colors are which... You know, I'm making my color palette for, for when I airbrush this thing. Nice. You're going to airbrush the whole, you're going to prime it and then redo it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you always do I that. just, I, I, you know, I say I'm not, and but then I end up doing it. I mean, that whole uh, uh, MS2 Zhang just, was just a, a total repaint. Yeah. Mm. And you use so, the, the ammo uh, ideas to do that one? Yeah, and I'll, I'm going to continue to do that some more, so. Perfect. Uh yeah, and then I'm, again, I've been uh, painting some more cav. In the meantime, I've been putting together my. Uh, I painted originally a Ritter. Exp- you know, the, I got four free models with the book. Uh, so, and I picked the Ritter before I knew what I was looking to get. Um, <laughs> uh, so I started painting up my rack, my rock. Rock. Uh, in- Picking them up red. I played a couple of games now, so now I'm ready to. And I got my list kind of tightened down, so I have my my set amount of models that I have to get ready to paint and uh, get those knocked out. But that's pretty much it. It's just uh, really uh, in between working on stuff for Adepticon and Vanguard, the release of Vanguard. In between, uh, a little prime of the Mospita, a little paint on the rock. Back to work, uh, hobby stuff. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I got going right now. And then, you know, and then in between that, I'm building the foreground buildings <laughs> for the Kings of War table. So that's a pain. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, if anybody knows, foreground is a company that makes, uh, lots of different genres. Cause even, uh, if you want some cool kits to put your, um, Gundams even as a, as a, uh, display base. They do a lot of cool buildings, but they are not easy to put together. They're MDF, pre-colored MDF, and mm. yeah, sometimes highly intricate, highly yeah, intricate. yeah. There's multiple levels to each wall, and it's it's they they've really engineered these things, so they look great, wow. but it's really a pain to put together. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I built literally a two-level house, maybe. Five by six square, five inches by five inches or six by six square. And that literally took me a day and a half. <laughs> yeah. So, like you need a degree in architecture. <laughs> yeah. And if, you know, if you can't find the piece you're looking for and you're like, Oh my God, what's going on? Yeah. yeah there's some really small pieces too. That's cool though. Yeah. It, so, and- so hopefully by the next time this mosquito will be done and I'll have some picks. Nice. Cool. Anything else? No, I think that's it as far as hobby stuff. Yeah. What are you working on, Rob? I do have a lot of stuff because uh every month <laughs> I do I do get my Gundam loot and this month was awesome because it was uh a Jesta from uh Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. I've never seen Unicorn, but this thing's cool. It's a this special ops Gundam. So he's yeah. all like dark dark colored and he's got like a cool rifle and he's really neat. The Jesta's pretty sweet. Yeah, I liked him a lot, and the kit was really nice too. And I also got with that came uh, the base jabber. It's the like the thing that you can climb on. It looks like a like a big like, sled. <laughs> yeah, sled. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's a it's space sled that you flies around, and you can have two mobile suits on it on the top and the bottom. And that was really fun too. It was a nice little thing, nice little stand to put him on. So he's displayed with his stand now. So I do that. So Gundam loot's always good for uh, doing something. It always gives me one kit 
I try to limit myself now to how many Gundam kits I bought because I have way too many. My shelves are full. <laughs> so I, I've, I've been limiting myself that way. But unfortunately, since I limited myself that way, I uh, expand into other things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just today I got the uh, Kickstarter from Armies of Men by Archon Studio. I think it's uh, meant to be like a, a third party for 40k kind of stuff. But it's just really cool tanks and uh, flyers and stuff. It kind of World War One, World War Two look to them, but sci-fi. But it oh, also came, it came with a mech too called a Mammoth Assault Walker. He's four legged, kind of looks like a bulldog a bit. And mm. so I, I got him to put together. I just got that today. It's all resin, nice kits, cheap really? price too. And the Kickstarter, Archon Studio. It was a Kickstarter, and it was really cheap. Like for that, I think it was fifteen bucks for that. And he's, I don't know, he's the size of, uh, I think that I can't remember how tall he is. Maybe. A, uh, 50, 60 millimeters, something like that tall and pretty wide. Like he's a big mm. guy. Wow. Really good prices on these things. So I couldn't resist. I got tons of vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> so I got like three tanks, a, a flyer and a bunch of, uh, cool Asterian for Dead Zone. There's things called Asterians. There's a, this race in this game. I assume it's supposed to be the, uh, what are the elves in 40k? Eldar. Eldar. Eldar? The space I, ones? Yeah. I think it's supposed to be the space elves. But it's got cool curves, and there's there's actually mech for those guys too. That's a little bit smaller, but kind of looks like a walker. So I might uh, have to write some dead zone rules for him to be a uh, Asterian <laughs> walker since they don't get one. And uh, on that, I've been doing Cav. I paint. I finally finished all the Cav. I got an Adepticon, so that's nice. And mm-hmm. just in time for the Cav Kickstarter, which that just ended, and I'll be getting so many uh, Cav models to paint. And I finally can do my uh, Templar Force I wanted to do, so I have to decide oh, yeah. a color scheme for those guys. And and the Rex that you get, we're going to get now. Yeah, a lot of cool, uh, they came with a lot of cool uh, terrain and uh, tanks and planes. And, uh, nice. Yeah, so, yeah, that Kickstarter ended up with 585 backers and $65,000, so that's pretty good for them. Nice nice medium-sized Kickstarter. So yeah, that was a nice, it was a nice little... Little rush at the end there, like you always get though. Yeah, so it was good for yeah. them. I, th- I think that terrain really helped because a lot of BattleTech guys would pick that up. And, and uh, what's that? That uh, 40k game, Adeptus Mechanicus, that new one with the big mechs. I it's think like, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a six or ten millimeter game too. So or Titanicus or something like that. Whatever it is, yeah. So that'll work with that too. And although those cool. people, it's. They have to have the highest end since it costs a thousand dollars for that game. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Cav. Good job, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And I'm sure <laughs> once you, we uh... did, you get your stuff, Brian. Yes, I did. I I forgot to mention it because I, I I really haven't taken it out of the bag yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did hand off Rick. Uh, I think if there are the two bags, were, I think one was a Ritter Force, and one was like an AEC. Uh, from what I can I can tell of the the Mex. Uh, inside it, so uh, he, I gave him the the Ritter one. So we'll we'll start uh, assembling these guys and and playing a couple games. Uh, have to read the rule book first. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Pat, you've been playing quite a bit of games of Cav now. Yeah, uh, it's fun. It, it really <laughs> it it touches a it t- it scratches the that mech itch you need, and it's not nearly as Crazy complicated as uh, Battle like Tech. Tech. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Well, I think that's pretty much what we've been doing, right? Yeah, that's what we've been working on. Yep. So we'll move into Comstar. We'll talk about all the other media. We could, I think we'll have a little bit more to talk about in there since there's been <laughs> some stuff going on. We'll be right back. Message from Comstar. And welcome to Comstar. I said welcome to everything. Now for Comstar. <laughs> so, uh, so this time, Pat, you might as well start. Pat, what have you been watching, playing? I don't know, reading. Uh, watching wise, I'm still kind of plodding through the Gundam Z or Zeta, very slowly but surely. Woo! Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh. It's an arduous task to start to watch Gundam. Uh, it's a lot of chrono- in chronological order. Yeah. And it's also a lot of uh, a lot of uh, episodes in that one, right? Isn't there forty something episodes in that series? Yeah, it's it's a lot. Fifty, fifty yeah. episodes. 
See, I, I got the uh, movies. I think I'm going to do the quick version of the Zeta to watch just the movie version. <laughs> that might to- be the way to go. Watch <laughs> I've heard mixed things about the Zeta movie ones, but I, I haven't watched them myself to, to verify. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure you lose a lot I'm of sure what's good. going on. <laughs> At 50 episodes down to, I think it's three movies. That's, you're going to lose yeah. a lot in the translation, but yeah. you'll get the gist <laughs> of it. <laughs> so, so really just watching Gundam Zeta when I can. Uh, other new, I haven't been reading much of, uh, other things. I've been, uh, I picked up, uh, off, a uh, one of our game, it's for sale Facebook pages that I'm part of in Chicago. Uh, I picked up the Kickstarter version of Ogre. Oh, yeah. Oh. The, the big classic giant game. Yeah. box. Yeah, yeah, the big yeah. giant box. I've been reading the rule book for that because uh, I want to get back to playing that game from way back in the go. That was back in the 80s when I played that game. Did you get nice. the Kickstarter with all the, the parts and everything, like the huge one? Yeah. It oh, was wow. all put together. It's all put together already, though. So <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and it came with the the sat the the little red satchel bag that you can cart, cart around with. So yeah, cool. Uh, so I've been reading reading up on that. Uh, I've been kind of following this new game that I saw at uh, a local con here called Dragonfall, called Giga Robo. Uh, mm. Apparently, they were at Adepticon last year, and I didn't see them. No, I didn't. But either. it's it's a mech game because uh, it's a combination of figure and cards and uh, oh Christ, what was the name of that card game that I bought at Gen Con? Uh, Critical uh, Mass. Critical Mass. Critical yeah. Mass. Yeah, uh, a combination of that with cubes and your robot hmm. or your mech, however you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're like super it, robots in that one, right? Like more, much more. Gigantor almost looking. Yeah, they're anime ish, kind of Matt Zinger Z. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was definitely get the Matt Zinger vibe. Yeah. Yeah. In that sense. Uh, but the figures are actually cool. So when I was talking to the guys, uh, Alex Chen, uh, who actually joined the Facebook page the other day, I, I noticed. Ooh, welcome. <laughs> uh, what was it? What, what was I saying? You, I totally you were talking to, <laughs> you to, talk to him. I think I just, I think I just had a stroke. What happened? <laughs> Where am I? You were, talk, you were talking to this guy about the. Oh yeah, and he was explaining the game for me, and then um, it was pretty cool because uh, you're gonna get the four robots, and in there you have the different pilots, and I think in the pilots you can pick different skills, and then with the robots, since there's only four, but each robot has a certain kind of loadout, so you, uh, loadout options, so you can take the same robot but have different. A different loadout, so it'd be a total different robot to begin with. Hmm. Uh, you have a deck of cards that you use for attack. Um, when you use the attack, uh, the more powerful it is, the more cooldown time it has. So it goes into your coolant section. So, like, it would be three turns before that card comes back into your hand, or a, a lighter attack, which is one, goes in your level one coolant. Uh, and that goes back in your hand the next turn kind of a thing. So uh, it has kind of a little cooldown period, which is cool. And then one of the cool things I have is, you know, you play on a board, a hex board with buildings. Um, what I thought was really cool is the, the the terrain can change. So when you wreck it into a building, say like you charge through a building or you shoot a building or you get knocked into a building, if the building collapses, you pull, you go to the environment deck, I think they called it, and then you – flip over the deck to see what happens when that building goes. So like one of the examples that he pulled when he was showing me the game uh, was uh, burst uh, flooding from burst pipes. So that hex now becomes a water terrain piece because the pipes in the building are flooding the area. That's a cool idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. Um, so I'm kind of excited. It's still in pre-order. Uh, if you go to the website, it's, uh, I think they were MRSR paying at 115. Uh, I think it's going for 105 or 106 if you round up on their website. And you're going to get four plastic unpainted robots, uh, which are good sculpts. I took some pictures. I'm going to put them on the Facebook page. Mm. Uh, they had the ones painted up, and then there are a couple. Of me. Um, there's also alternative sculpts uh, that you can pick up uh, of the same model. So mm. if you wanted to play a different model 
Um, uh, like one of them had a uh, a big kind of sword in the alternative sculpt. The sword is a part and on his back, which give him wings at that point. Oh, there. sweet. Yeah, and then uh, they already have two expansion robots out. Uh, those are also available for pre-order, if I remember correctly. Um, there's a big giant pre-order bundle for, I think, 150 what gives you the core game and the two expansions. Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm kind of excited. And then, you know, it each thing tracks with armor and power uh, and damage, like with the cubes, like in critical mass, uh, things like that. So it finds a little bit of everything, a figure card game, and, uh, and it, l- it looks all right. Uh, so uh, I'm going to – if they hopefully they'll be at Adepticon again because uh, I would like to – uh, see it more, uh, and you know, I'd like to see what other people are saying about it. So, if you guys have messed around with it or whatever, uh, get on the Facebook page, drop a comment, uh, or drop a comment on the, the podcast here. Uh, I think that'd be, I would love to hear more about it because I'm kind of, I'm really interested in this game. Yeah, it um, sounds interesting. Very cool. Um, anything else media wise? I don't think I got much. No, no, I don't think I got much as far as that's concerned. Uh, I've been meaning to check out that gun frame. Oh yeah, that other game that people were talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What I posted on there. Uh, I have I have not yet read the rules for that, but uh, with ogre and <laughs> and again life, I just have not. <laughs> I mean, Steve, I love Steve Jackson to death, but God, but that guy, those rule books can just go on forever sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's all I got. Cool. Right, you got anything going? Um, well, uh, as I may have seen in the uh, the the Facebook page recently, I did uh, recently get uh, my hands on uh, Bubblegum Crisis, which yeah, is that. a cool. which is a, a fun anime show. It's a uh, it's uh, eight OVA set, there, so it's like forty five minute episodes. Um, it, it's it's a great like cyberpunk uh, Blade Runner meets streets of fire kind of vibe to it. It's kind of, it's a fun one. There, there's, uh, some robots that they, they fight in like power suits. Um, it's, it's four, uh, main heroines and they, they fight these robots that go out of control and start wrecking up the city at night. <laughs> and then also at night they're, they're one of them's a, a singer. Like her band is called Pris. Uh, she's Pris and the replicants. Yeah. So like the Blade Runner vibe is is strong. <laughs> really, uh, this one hits it. I'm just gonna call it Replicants. Yep, yep. But again, that's her band. <laughs> the, uh, <coughs> the the robots that they fight are called Boomers. Um, so they explode. Go <laughs> figure. Uh, but that that was fun. I I just recently got that. Um, I finished. I, I forget if I mentioned it last time. Because my my perception of time has been pretty distorted too. Uh, I finished playing Wolfenstein Two, uh, the new Colossus. That was that was a pretty fun uh, game about Nazis in the future, um, and and killing them on on planets and stuff like that. Uh, but there's there was some big mechs involved in that and that kind of weird, um, you know, it's, it, it was really. I don't know what to, how to describe the aesthetic of it because it's still kind of the, had that World War II kind of f- flavor and, and aesthetic to it um, and visual style, but it was still very much like, okay, well, this is the future and it's got lasers and, and missiles coming out of it and all that kind of stuff. So um, really, really fascinating uh, game series. And then uh, kind of slightly tangential is I... I I also got my hands on uh, Valkyria Chronicles 4, which is mech related in the, you know, the, the, the lowest sense of, of what a mech is. So it's basically a, a, a tactical. So it's yeah. Ta- <laughs> it's a tactical game where you, you're commanding a tank. And so it's, it's like, a, it's a, it takes place in this fictional World War II, um, Area where it's it's Russia slash Germany invading the United Kingdom slash Poland, and uh, <laughs> and it, it's it's a really really great uh, franchise. Uh, it's it's all like watercolor, 
it, it's mm. it's cell shaded, so it's it's not like realistic graphics or anything, but it's got this great, you know, beautiful uh, look to it. And the the whole premise is you are in charge of a, a tank crew and a small uh, set of units, and you move them about the battlefield and and have fun with a uh, with a tank. So um, really, really solid game series. Uh, but again, kind of tangentially related to Max. <laughs> um, what other fun stuff? Uh, I don't know if the book series I started reading is a Mech one. It's got it's got spaceships in it. I know that. Uh, it's called Second Chances, and I, I forget the author off the top of my head, so I don't know if that qualifies either. <laughs> Um, but I, I did also start, uh, picking away at, uh, Battletech, uh, from Hairbrain, uh, studios again, um, booted that back up by not, uh, sadly I'm not, um, recording it. Uh, I, when I originally started playing that series, I was, I was planning to do a let's play, but, uh, at this point I haven't even, I, you know, I started that back like in April and I haven't edited a single episode together. So I'm like, (laughs) I just kind of want to play the game. Uh, at this point, yeah, enjoy uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's that's been a lot of fun uh, getting back into that. Uh, I'm still not that great at it, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just liberated a prison camp, which I think is like the first, like, you know, next step mission after the main prologue is over. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, I think that's the first. Uh... The, the first like, mission the first, you get from what's her face that you say yeah, in the prologue. Yeah, the, the first big story mission, really. So, um, so yeah, I've I've been I've been kind of all over the place on on media. Uh, I I forget if uh, Star Wars Rebels season four had come out in the time between our last recording, um, but I got that and finished that. That was a fun series. Um, there are a handful of mechs in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, I'm I, I'm in this this weird spot where I've still kind of got that cyberpunk bug kind of nibbling at me for especially for like Bubblegum Crisis and Battletech and stuff like that. Um whereas I, I'm also kind of trying to gear up for this fantasy thing, so I think as soon as I finish Bubblegum Crisis, I just need to put on uh Escaflone <laughs> and and just watch all of that. <laughs> and that'll right. get me in the right mood. Get that back in the groove. Yeah, yeah. So cool. that's uh that's most of it. Nice. Been busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Real life catches up with you, man. It does. Mm-hmm. Oh, um I, I and I know uh one guy had asked about the, the bubblegum crisis where I, I got that from. because uh, it, it's kind of a rare rare series i think that it was actually a kickstarter that brought it back on blu-ray oh, uh, it, it was from uh the website right stuff with one f um it's one I've, I've talked about on the show a couple of times now it's like my main go-to for anime stuff uh it's all all legal um merchandise and things like that so it's it's something i like to support when i can and uh and they've got uh pat labor complete everything coming out on blu-ray like at the beginning of november uh so i'm waiting to pre-order that that nice. one had a big price tag on it because <laughs> that's get... that's the whole yeah. series the whole ova set all three movies that's a uh, lot it's yeah. a lot and it's it's good stuff and, and the price wasn't that bad it was i can't remember what yeah. it was but it, it wasn't horrible I do you get the, like, do you get the live action pat labor I don't think that's included. I, for some reason, I, I haven't heard about a U.S. release for that. I, uh, I might have just been under a rock got, or something. There's got, well, there's got to be a, a dubbed or a subtitled version of it. At, well, su- sure. at some point, yeah. Well, I'm sure there's it's some anime group has probably put out the uh, subs for it or whatever. Oh, yeah. there's there's I'm sure there's fan subs already. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. And then uh, there was another... Well, it's kind of a blast from the past. There's a new anime series that came out called like uh, Gridman S S S S S. I think there's five <laughs> S's. So, do you guys uh, did you ever watch the the Samurai Sentai uh, uh, Super Samurai something something? 
So oh, the a, number of S's is a pun on the U.S. Uh, version of this. Basically, it was like giant. It was like Power Rangers, but it yeah. also was in a computer. Yeah, it was. It was a version of like that's what Power Rangers was based on, right? Like the in Japan, that was the same series. I think that was just a later one that never came to the states. I think. Well, there there is uh, there are so many uh, of those uh, Tokusatsu shows like that. Uh, it's it's really hard to keep track of them. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that that's that true. one I. Uh, I think did actually come to the the U.S. Oh, did it? Uh, as well, like like in the days of the big bad Beetleborgs kind of thing. No, oh, yeah. Uh, so so it was in the heyday of that. Uh, but I it it was funny because uh, one of my first uh, like giant robot action figures is of the the mech that's in that show. Mm. Uh, so that was that was a real blast in the past. I'm like holy cats. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's a new anime came out for for that franchise. So oh, an anime, not not. I a got a buddy that's. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Anything so else? That <laughs> that should cover it. I'm sure there's there's more stuff going on, but I've talked enough. <laughs> well, actually, you brought bringing up uh, that whole Power Rangers thing. It reminded me. Uh, I wasn't gonna mention it until you reminded me. But uh, there's a YouTube channel called uh, Toy Galaxy. And he, he collects toys, mostly like, like he has a Boba Fett collection of like 500 Boba Fetts or something like that. Of nice. the original, original Boba Fett from, uh, Star Wars. 500? The, yeah, something like that. Cause he gets people to send them to him. He's, he's got the largest collection of, uh, original Boba Fetts. And he doesn't care what, what condition they're in and they're all like beat up and stuff. But, <laughs> but that's, that's the side point. the real Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He uh he recently did a uh one where he showed off all his Gundams that he's collected over the years. He used to live in Japan as a kid. Like I think his dad was in the military or something, so he was on oh, he was stationed baby. there. Yeah. Oh. So uh he as a kid he he was really into Gundams and then now he's just collecting them and he has like I don't know, hundreds of Gundam all different types. But he also did a, I think he did a either he does like histories of certain toys and I think he did the history of Robotech. And he also he, I don't know if he did the did Power Rangers or something? He was talking about the whole Power Rangers and all the different uh, iterations mm-hmm. of them because that was one of the ones he liked as a kid. And uh, but it's a really good show. So if you go back into it, he does. He, yeah, like I say, he's did the history of the Robotech toys. He's done history of like all different toys, but mecha related. He's he has like a few Gundam uh, show off his collections and all different ones. He has one that's huge. It's like one twentieth scale or something. It's like gigantic. So it's it's pretty cool sh- channel. So Toy Galaxy on YouTube. So that's something Very I check cool. out all the time. Uh, I guess nice. I should mention the uh, Robotech comic. I've been reading that. Uh, a lot of people don't like it, <laughs> <laughs> especially I guess. Are the, you liking it? Oh yeah, I think it's fun, but it a lot of people don't like it because the art and it's not 100 percent accurate to like they, they might get certain things wrong. So you get the uh, rivet counters getting a little mad at it. And uh, they've also changed the story a lot, which I think annoys people too. But it's like a retelling. It's like the – I think I mentioned it before. It's like the uh, Battlestar Galactica retelling. It's got the flavor, but it's it's changing things. And it's changing things more and more as it goes through. Like oh, currently, I realized that they were changing stuff in the comic. Oh, yeah. Uh, currently, Rick is blind, but he can still see because of the protoculture or something. He's got some kind of weird vision. <laughs> Uh, there's a, uh, because of robo technology. <laughs> yeah. Something, something's gone protocol- crazy. He's got a protoculture third eye. Yeah, sort of. That's exactly what it's like, yeah. So I I find this kind of hilarious because specifically with it being the the Macross side of Robotech, because Macross has had a history of having, like, their their animated series, and then they do a movie retelling of it, and a whole bunch is different. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And they've they've done that, like, so many times now. (laughs) Yeah, so it's kind of like this, and... Then there's also a royal Roy Doppelganger running around killing people, and he may have killed the captain. And <laughs> oh no! There's weird yes. things. There's like weird things idea. going on. Yeah, that's like it's that. it's very different. And then they're introducing more of the bad guys and and uh, different like groups of them, and it's really it's really cool. And uh, it's it's a neat little retelling of it. And second year just started, so it's it's been going on for quite a while now. So it's, it seems to be selling. So it's good for them. It's from Titan Comics. If anybody's interested, nice. But I, I, I tell you right now, if you're if you're a <laughs> if you're a diehard, I don't like anything to change. Don't read this comic book. It's very different. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, I was playing the hell out of BattleTech until my uh, laptop died, and now I can't play it. So that sucked. Oh no. Lo siento. Yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, speaking of BattleTech, they just announced that expansion, Flashpoint. I don't think oh, yeah, we talked yeah. about that yet. It's gonna be well, thirty. Yeah, I I haven't read anything about it. <laughs> yeah, it's thirty new hours of content, and I think they're gonna have like random events and stuff, which are cool. Random missions and oh dear. And I think you're gonna be fighting. <laughs> uh, I think you can get uh, reputation with the pirates now, which is cool. And they're gonna have three new new mechs. They're gonna have a crab, a cyclops, and a hatchetman. Hatchetman should be fun because you can axe oh, people. I love the hatchetman. <laughs> and and they also a uh, second expansion they just announced that's going to come out in next summer is called Urban Warfare and it's going to be in dense metropolitan areas with a uh, new battle oh, mechs and gameplay which that is that will be awesome so hopefully by then I have a uh, computer to play it on because uh, this computer we're recording on is barely functioning so it won't it will not be able to play BattleTech my laptop was my my game thing and it died your game rig uh... yeah well you know what happened to it. Uh, I, it, when I went to bed, it was updating, uh, Windows 10, and when I woke up, it was, uh, not posting. So, it I had blame a Windows att- 10. It had a heart attack. Pretty much, yeah. I think it's it, probably the mother of Cardiac bird, arrest. It's like less, you, just over a year old. RAM is bad? No, I think it's, uh, it's not posting. It's not doing anything, so I think it's the motherboard. So, oh, that sucks. Yes. But I'm gonna try to get it repaired. We'll see what I can do. If not, I'll have to shill out more money for another laptop. But like I say, it's just over a year old, so that really sucks. Mm, yeah. There's got to be a warranty in there somewhere, right? Glad there was a year warranty. Uh, <laughs> Another thing I've been and, doing it is I've been collecting my Battletech game. It's been growing exponentially. I, I have a lot. <laughs> eBay is my friend, but I also have a hookup. Uh, Fabian, our friend Fabian uh, from New York City. He goes to a game store and you have to find a whole collection of the old FASA books for really cheap prices. So he, he just... he. I, I just bought a lot of those, and he's sending them to me. He is, he is my dealer. Proud <laughs> proud dealer, Fabian. Thank him. Nice. <laughs> dealer Fabian. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't remember if the last time when I talked, if I, uh, what I, from all my uh, Battletech books, but yeah, it's getting, my collection's getting quite large. Yeah, it's nice to buying them, picking them up every chance you get. Like, you picked up some when you came out, were out here. Yeah, those are the newer ones, which I, I was reading through, which are good. But uh, actually, I could, uh, that was one of the things I've been reading is uh, the first Succession War from Battletech that they put out. And it's the history of the whole war, which is kind of fun. And reading it, I'm like, wow, these people, they went deep into their history. You could say anything about uh, Battletech and now Catalyst, but those guys, they they don't chimp, uh, chimp out or cheap out on the uh, old uh, background. They they go deep, <laughs> like this is like a real history at this point. They have enough. Uh, I think there's less uh, written about some of our history compared to BattleTech's history. So, yeah, it's a really deep world, which I like a lot. And I'm still reading the uh, books, and I uh, just just finishing the uh, first set of the Clan War books, where they they uh, just got stopped by Comstar. So, it's it's really cool. And it's fun they, to read they, those again. They got stuck by the uh, the media portion of our podcast. That's awesome. That's right. Yep. Our media portion. We are portion. unstoppable. We stopped the clans from invading for at least 15 years, so we'll see. You're Yay. welcome. Boo <laughs> clans. But I think that uh, that covers what I've been doing, I think. I don't think there's anything else mech-related. But there's always more. I... I, I, I Tried to keep up on my uh, anime, but there's just been up too many other shows I've been trying to keep up with. Stuff. It seems that uh, Marvel keeps putting out a new uh, Netflix show every ten minutes, so I'm trying to keep <laughs> catch up with all those. So. Yeah. I stopped trying to keep up. Like I haven't even watched Black Lightning yet. Or oh, that's the CW know. stuff. I'm saying the. Uh, well, the, I'm a the superhero in general. Like I haven't yeah. even watched. Uh, oh, I gave up on all those shows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the damn show I'm thinking of on, on Netflix? Uh, Cloak and Dagger. Oh yeah, that that was oh, yeah. too. Yeah, I forgot about that one. I even, yeah. I forgot that even was out. <laughs> well, that that one's on. Is that a Hulu show? Is oh, it? it is Hulu. Yeah, I think that one's that one was a Hulu one. Yeah, it, it, there's there's so many shows across all these streaming platforms now. It's hard to you yeah. can't just have one. <laughs> but we need more. Uh, we need some mech shows. <laughs> we do. So like like Voltron. Which will be sadly wrapping up, but also gloriously wrapping up. Oh, that's too bad. Soon. Yeah, I, I haven't uh, caught up on that. I only watched the first season of that one so far. I think the last season is due out. Is it next month? Is it November? I think. 
So yeah, it's it's it'll be it'll be wrapping up soon, but it, it's it's been a pretty great show. Yeah, that's it's good to, that Netflix can afford that to like just mm. make these kind of quick shows and almost you know purposely do them. Just I don't know how many seasons is it four three. Four. Uh, they're kind of the like the mini seasons. Yeah, they only yeah. do thirteen. Uh, like, they only do thirteen episodes. So. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. Well, that's what I like about uh, Netflix. They they can they can do these kind of like they don't have to have twenty six episodes or whatever for a full TV to get series, like you know. you know going for syndication and whatnot. Yeah, yeah they don't yeah. care about any of that stuff, so they just do their quick shows. And when it's done, it's done, and you get a little mini yeah, series. Pri- Prime is the same way. Amazon. They do yeah, the same well, way. all those ones. Yeah, yeah, Hulu and all of them. Yeah. <coughs> And YouTube now has their red or whatever it's called, which they're going to start doing television shows on too. So yeah. hopefully someone in there says, Hey, we need <laughs> a, a mech show. Battletech would be a perfect show to make. It's so deep. We'll <laughs> there's, there's a huge history in that. Yeah. Okay, well, look at <laughs> that's right. Clan hater. But <laughs> I guess that wraps up, uh, Comstar. Anything else that anybody good. can think of? Nothing I can. You guys oh. have more than I have. Yeah. Well, we try. <laughs> we'll be back with the Mech Bay Hanger. Now entering the Mech Bay Hanger. And this is the Mech Bay Hanger. We're going to be talking about, as I said in the beginning, movies. Mecha movies. Not anime, because, hey, that would be the whole show. <laughs> there is tons of anime movies, but we're talking more of I'd say North American culture. I don't know if there's any movies that aren't North American that anybody knows about, but, uh, but the kind of things, like, I'll start off, I'll just say things like, uh, in Star Wars, the fact that AT-ATs and ATSTs, they're mechs. Like, that's, that's the thing. Mm hmm. For sure. And, uh, I have to get shout out to, uh, Coach because he always yells at me for not talking about, he keeps painting up all his, uh, what is that game called? Imperial Assault? Is it Legion? No, or Legion, it, that's it. Yeah, Legion. He's got yeah. his his AT uh was it ATSTs in that game? I don't even know. ATSTs. Yeah, pretty pretty sure. Yeah. So he he, he keeps wanting to there's an ATST and a and an airspeeder. Oh, and they have yeah. the uh ATRT or whatever, the one that's just a person on legs almost. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Recon one, which I'm not a fan of, but yeah. <laughs> So I have to shout out to Coach because he he always yells that we don't mention them as mechs. But there you go. Star Wars has mechs in it because they are, really, they're guys in a giant robot thing. Even if it's got, well, I guess the ATSD only has two legs. It's got no arms, though. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, Coach, like, Star Wars was on the top of my list, too. Rob just beat me to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's like. Yeah, it, yeah. it wasn't even on my list. No, oh, really? <laughs> Because you what? knew we were going to mention it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to mention that one off the bat because of that. What, who wants to go next? Brian, you got one you want to throw up? Uh, sure. Um, uh, in the, the James Cameron Avatar series, yes. the, uh, the, the jungle mechs that they're running around with, all really cool looking. Uh, remind me a lot of the Striders from Dead Zone. Right. Yes. Uh, Kind of the yeah. the open canopy things. Uh, oddity of them is that they got their their ammo belts like on the outside. <laughs> They're like well, running around in the jungle. It's like that's gonna that's, get caught on something. That's to look cool. That's all that is. It, that is it is the rule aesthetics of cool. before uh, <laughs> before use functionality. Yeah, I actually really liked the villain in that movie. I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. So supposedly, when these other Avatar movies comes out, he's supposed to be in it again. I'm like, didn't he die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it's his maybe twin brother, a force, a force ghost. Force ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, a uh, a uh, blue alien ghost. Yes, yeah. Avatar was de- on my list. Yep, that's that. I haven't watched that movie that often, but I remember that being my favorite part of the movie for sure. Was that mm-hmm. when he's going crazy near the end and just mowing yeah. down people with the big guns? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. Pat, what do you got? All right, well, speaking of James Cameron, I got a movie that I watched a long time ago, like back in the early, late 80s. It was called Gunhead. Gunhead, really? It was so bad. 
There <laughs> is talk about James Cameron being a super fan of this movie. Oh, I was going to say he didn't direct it anything. Uh, no, it's this is how bad the movie is direct. It, it uh, is the director is Alan Smithy. No, oh. <laughs> classic. Yeah. So, so it was so bad the director took his name off. Exactly. Five point uh, four stars on IMDb. <laughs> yeah, and so I've never I, heard I, of it. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a quick rundown. This is why I think James Cameron is a, a fan because in this future there is a powerful metal source called Tex Mexium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's spelled Gunhead H E H E D. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. And James Cameron, so uh, that's where he gets unobtainium from, from Tex Mexium, I think. <laughs> that makes and it, too and it, much and sense. It, and it takes a little bit, of, and it also takes a little bit from Terminator in this movie. Where so they had this Tex Mexium. I can't even say it. <laughs> and so they they built the supercomputer to protect it, so no one can abuse it. And then the super, the supercomputer, then at, at some point, it becomes like almost like a uh, Voltron decides to take over the world because he thinks humans are not needed anymore. So they activate a gun head, which stands for gun unit heavy and eliminate device, which is a bunch of robots, mech piloted robots. And so they use it to take it down. This is all in the pre in the prologue. It's not even <laughs> the movie yet. <laughs> So then basically they, de- they defeat the giant, uh, the computer, who's got a, a bot too called the Arrow, Arrow Bot. Uh, but both sides die and there's no real clear winner. So now you pan to the movie where there's a bunch of scavengers heading to the island to look for computer chips because apparently computer chips are worth more than gold in this movie. <laughs> Especially so, if they're golden computer chips. Yeah, so basically <laughs> you find out throughout this thing that this computer, which is called Chiron 5, has been just laying low until it can wait for <laughs> the humans to develop Tex Mexium into whatever it needs to be. It needs to Johnny take Five's over. evil twin. <laughs> exactly. So and then so basically they the, they find that this is happening. So then they find an old gunhead and are able to scavenge and rebuild it and kind of defeat the computer at the end of the movie. Spoilers. So oh come on! If anyone, th- this movie falls into. It's, it had the cool robot. Yeah, it looks cool. I'm looking at pictures of it now. It looks awesome. Yeah, uh, but the movie is so bad. It's good. It's one of those movies, you know, I love that movie because it's so horrible. I'll I guess it's based on a uh, It's based on a manga, it seems. Oh, is it really? Yeah. All I know is that I just remember in 89, uh, we watched this movie. And they were like, oh, God, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> it's it's referenced in uh, an anime that I like, Iria Zerum. Uh, the bounty hunter. It's so weird. Yeah. Really? They actually mention it? I guess so. That's, That's what cool. IMDb is telling me. Huh. And I can trust IMDb. That's true. <laughs> so that's one of the things. So that's one of the mo- movies I enjoyed. I'll have to check this thing out. It yeah, sounds it's bad. rad. It's bad, though. It's bad. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The dialogue is horrible. The film editing is is like high school of high school <laughs> transition effects. It's so bad. <laughs> nice dissolve. <laughs> so nice, uh, good Paul. Nice. Yeah. Well, guess what? Nineteen eighty nine, really bad movie. Yeah. Robot Dennis. Jocks. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> yeah. that, was second, that was the first one that got me. That same year, Robot Jocks. Yeah, that oh, was a, man. Robot as, Jocks. That one's great. Yep, high school watching Robot Jocks. It's actually directed by Stuart Gordon, who did all those cool uh, Cthulhu movies, the Lovecraft movies back for. Uh, is it uh, what company makes this? I wonder if it's uh, might be the Robot same company. Yeah, it's Robot Jocks. It's directed by the uh, same guy who did all those ones. And uh, yeah, also a five point three on IMDb. Oh, it's, it's worth more than that. Come on. Yeah, but but at least Robot Jocks has got the director's name on it. It's true. If you look at Gunhead, it literally it's says Alan Smithy. But this is uh, World War Three, and uh, they don't do war. Instead, they just have giant robots fighting each other. Which over pieces of land, yeah. Yeah. What more do you want? And of course, there's some backstabbing and some intrigue. And I think it, oh, it was. Don't forget the genetically enhanced robot jock pilot. Well, that's yeah. They're they're important. They're the robot jocks. They're the titular robot jocks. What did they call them? Gen jocks. I can't remember. It's been Probably. a long time since I've seen it, but. It was fun. I remember watching this as a kid and saying, I want more of this. And, well, it's probably because it reminded me of uh, 
Battletech. Of Battletech, yep. And, uh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, there's, uh, there are, <laughs> nobody's in it that's famous, I don't think. There, it's, uh, definitely a B movie. Uh, yeah, the Anna Marie Johnson, maybe. Was she in something she, else? <laughs> well, she was big in In Living Color and all those other, uh, ways. Oh, really? Movies. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, it says the uh, production company went bankrupt during the filming of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so is that that, I think that explains a lot. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I do want to revisit it because it was a that was a real fun movie. From what I remember, maybe I shouldn't revisit it because it was in my mind a fun movie. So I don't know. I I I, I admit I didn't hear about Robot Jocks until I saw Pacific Rim, which oh really. I'll jump ahead and, and put that as my next one. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, and I can say I really, really enjoyed Robot Jocks. Um, and, and, you know, after following watching Pacific Rim, which is an, another excellent movie by Guillermo del Toro. Yes. Yeah. Pacific Rim proved that, that in the day of, uh, now with our special effects, you can actually do these movies well, and they don't look mm. like crap. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's not stop motion anymore. Like all those movies had stop motion robots. Did the did that uh, Gunheads have stop motion? Uh, no, I think it actually had built models. <laughs> yeah, just oh, big nice. giant ones. Or even not built models, but you know, kind of yeah. Star Wars esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Model. Yeah, kids. yeah. Yeah, Robot Jocks was stop motion, and it was like. Harry House in stop motion, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it's like sit in Sinbad stop motion. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, please yeah. tell tell us about Pacific Rim. So yeah, Pacific Rim. For those of you who don't know, uh, the one that rock, right? Well, yeah. Welcome anybody to who, the, the podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's in a, a not too distant future, uh, so to speak, uh, where where giant uh, monsters have have broken through um, a, a breach in the you know space and time like a portal is in the the Pacific Ocean and so these giant monsters have just been terrorizing the coast and we we figured as, as we do man the only thing that can fight a giant monster <laughs> is our own giant monsters and so uh, humanity puts together these these giant mechs um, called Jaegers. And, uh, and they have a, a two pilot system where the pilots like merge their brains to, to balance the, the mental load of, of controlling these things. And, uh, it's got some, well, well, the, the characters themselves, um, you know, fr- from one standpoint might seem pretty simple and straightforward. It actually has a lot of really great characters in it. Um, or, or I found them pretty compelling and interesting. And, uh, and and so yeah, it's it's the these these giant mechs uh, protecting Earth from uh, invasion by giant monsters. And uh, I won't spoil the rest of it, but know that there's a part where one of these giant mechs grabs a big old oil tanker <laughs> and smashes it into <laughs> into Use a it. monster's face. Uses it like a hatchet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, that it's, is that is one of the highlights rad. for sure. Yes. And especially with that, with the, especially that scene is when, uh, it's the, uh, weight of it all. It's everything seems weighty and everything. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a fantastically crafted movie. Um, like the, the visual effects on it are just stunning. And, and you're absolutely right. Like one of the things that really sells is just how heavy this stuff is. Yeah. They don't move quick. They could, everything's kind of lumbering, but it's because they're so big. So yeah. yeah. yeah it hits like a freight train. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a good one. Uh, the 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 sequel, yeah. while interesting, was not as I liked great. It. Um, it, I liked it, it because it's, it's the sequels fun. it's very anime because it's all about kids yes. who are forced to pilot these mechs all of a sudden. And it seemed like it was like oh, okay, this is like every anime trope right here. Yeah, right. yeah, it it definitely had that same vibe. Uh, I would say it's it's the better version of the the Independence Day <laughs> movie. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it came out like the year before. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's lacking a, a little bit of something in it, but, uh, for the, you know, part of that is probably that Guillermo del Toro was not attached to it at that point. Uh, he was off winning Oscars. <laughs> so, uh, 
but yeah, it's it's a really fun series, really cool mech designs, um, and and some pretty awesome fights that just destroy cities. Yes, cool. Pat got the next one. Oh yeah. So in staying with the the Pacific Rim, uh, I was flipping through uh, the Cody. <laughs> And I came upon a movie called <laughs> Atlantic Rim. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it, is it by, uh, what's it called, Asylum? It, yeah. I yeah. Think that's one of the Asylum ones. That's oh, hilarious. It was so bad. Who is in that? There was someone There's that I recognize. No one. There was the, the. It's not Billy Zane the, or someone. <laughs> no, it's it's the it's the Native American actor guy who plays the big general. One point <laughs> seven stars. Oh, it's so bad. So basically, the the premise of this one is that they're all these thousands, millions of year old creatures have been hatching their eggs in the bottom of the Atlantic using crude oil and salt water. And so when an oil rig goes missing. They activate what's called this Armada program, which is three giant robots. And this is a hodgepodge of just every mech movie together. <laughs> uh, you got the Pacific Rim with these giant monsters. You got the freaking Power Rangers with each robot called Red, Blue, and Green. It even it's got links to that movie Stealth. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Because the crew is it's the is the black straight guy. You got the love interest girl, and you got the 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 hotshot white pilot. <laughs> uh, but this so, does not have Jamie Foxx in it. <laughs> no. Uh, the costuming is bad. They wearing they're wearing these horrible looking scuba suits. They're loose fitting. Uh, but they go down. Uh, so an oil rig goes missing, basically. So they go down there to try and save the oil rig people, and that's when they find out that these creatures are. Uh, are becoming are hatching now, and so. But the, the 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 one cool thing I think was pretty cool is that when they first started the movie, the the robots or the mechs are being piloted by, you know, analog sticks and pedals and all that stuff, like a uh, drone they, almost. Yeah, uh, but you're in the cockpit. Oh, so you know, uh, so then in the unlike Pacific Rim where they were all linked to the head and you know the the Jaeger responded to their movement in Atlantic Rim in the beginning they're just steering it with uh you know analog controls. Yeah, it's almost like battle battle mechs at that point. Yeah. That's kinda cool. Uh but at at the end of the movie they get a, a breakthrough and they get what they call it they get a neural nick a neural link, I forget what they called it in the movie. Something. But then it, <laughs> then it allows them to control the robot with their movements. Ah. Yeah. Like a Macross Plus. Yes. <laughs> so, so you're not going to believe this. There's a sequel. No, no. I was just going to say. I just as I, we, I was uh, going back right. to my research on this. There's a sequel. In, it's been it's paid for and it's and it's filming. Oh no, they're wrapped. They wrap. They wrapped. Is that the? Is that yeah. Atlantic Rim Resurrection or is that the sequel? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, there's actually a. Uh, I already seen the cover for it. I wonder if it's already out. Uh, Got well, one point seven it's, stars. It's direct. It's directed DVD. If it, it's out already, yeah. There's. It's definitely looks like. It's... Oh yeah, there's somebody holding it. Yep, must be out. <laughs> so I, I watched this movie like at three a.m. <laughs> so this as is you a, do, this is a, this is a three a.m. movie. Yeah, you know, that's all asylum movies. They're all nuts. Yeah, and, and the and the and the, and the, the CG wasn't good. For the robots and the creatures, it <laughs> almost it almost looks stop motion esque. Well, on a side but, note, uh, the the guy who runs Asylum actually follows me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> tell, but tell him we really liked the movie. Atlantic <laughs> Rim was a great. They got robbed of stars. It was so good. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> I, I do love how they just rip off other movies. I think it's. It, it's just a genius way to get like grandmothers to buy their grandsons movies by mistake. Yes. I Grammy mean, there's a scene when they're, when they're walking to their, their mechs, it, it's literally straight from stealth when they're walking to their place. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. Nice. Uh, is it my turn? I think. Yes. I think so. 
Well, I'm going to mention uh, one of my favorite movies, and that's uh, Aliens. Obviously, uh, the power loader in Aliens is it's a mm. sort of a mech, yeah, and that sort of the queen <laughs> fight at the end with that. Uh, the thing is, those those uh, machines that they, that James Cameron invented pretty much for that they're they're making them nowadays. That's power loaders like that's, that are becoming true. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, but I, I do love that fight, and it, it is sort of a mech. It is a uh, very early version of a mech, I would say. Mm-hmm. But, yes, Ripley is awesome. <laughs> that, that, that movie holds up so well, in my opinion. It yes. does. It's, it, is, it is number one on my list of best movies of all time. It is a classic. That Blade Runner is similar, and uh, it's a, for some reason they they found a way to do the future without, like Alien is it's it's dated, but it's still a great movie. But it's it's much with the computers and stuff being all like lights and stuff from the seventies, like they were at the time. Sure. Like mm-hmm. it's got a cool aesthetic, but it's it's definitely you can tell it's from the seventies. Where I think uh, Aliens could come out today, and you'd still be like, wow, that's a great movie. Mm-hmm. Brian, you got another one. Uh, sure. Let's see. Uh, so, uh, I kind of, uh, not, a, not obscure, but, but, uh, one that's probably kind of fallen out of, uh, public, uh, memory is, uh, Chappie. Oh, yeah. Chappie was fun. Oh, Chappie, yeah. 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 Got it. Ch- Chappie, it, like, it's got, uh, the, the little robot running around the whole time, hanging out with, uh, what the heck is that band? Uh, uh Diane Wood. <laughs> yeah, Diane Wood. Oh God! It's and they're like playing themselves. Diane Wood, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they're pretty much playing themselves. Yeah. I, so like, I think their character names are their actual yeah. name. Well, it's probably because they wouldn't the respond. In that movie, Ninja and whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but but I I mention it not just because Chappie's running around, but um, uh, Hugh Jackman's character. Uh, oh, that's right. Who is who is trying to track him down and capture and or destroy him? Uh, spoilers uh, gets a giant like remote control mech suit that he uses to to try and and take him out near the end. Um, I forget what they even called that one. It, it was yeah. it was it had a kind of a cool name if I rec- remember correctly. Yeah, I can't remember, but yeah, the part where he's like smashing through a wall and like mm. coming after him, like it was that once again, it was the weight of it. That uh, yeah, yeah, they're cool. Chap- Chappie was a, a kind of an underrated movie. It, it was it was really solid, um, and I remember it was like really popular for a brief moment in time, and then it was kind of gone, <laughs> and no one remembered it. Yeah, it's true, especially for uh, for um, Neil Blomkamp. He's, he's a great director, but yeah, Chappie is one of those flies under the radar movies. Mm-hmm. It's a good one though. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Yeah, that could be something that people didn't uh, know about. And it, it's a good movie. It's it's you have to put up with. Uh, they're really weird. Diane Wood, guy, they're really <laughs> yeah, weird. No, Diane Wood, they, I can't. Sometimes they teach. They're too, they're too much sometimes. They, they yeah. teach Chappie all sorts of things that are wrong. <laughs> yeah, they they pretty it's, much it's teach like him Johnny to become Five a criminal. Rated, rated yeah, R. <laughs> yeah, it's like Johnny Five if a, a bunch of criminals found him and took him in instead of a little kid. <laughs> yeah. All right, you're going to run up and you're going to start smashing these mailboxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chaffee. Yes. That is that's a that is a fun movie. Mm-hmm. Pat? Yes. Do you have any more? I do. Excellent. <laughs> I'm going to go I'm going to violate the rob rule. Oh, is this going to be dun, Transformers? Dun. No, I'm going to oh. say Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Yay! Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was just that's a great movie. It's probably one of the best Godzilla movies out there. Mm-hmm. And the is best it... part about that one is that the aliens that make the Mecha Godzilla supposedly use the bones from Godzilla's predecessor. I don't know how people know that. Well, you're going deep on Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, deep dive. There, there, there's a lot of the Mecha Godzillas too. <laughs> Yeah, it keeps uh, coming back, but you know. I I think I have uh, Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, which is uh, a more recent one. I think. Yeah, I'm doing the original. The original yeah. is 1974. 
Mm-hmm. Mecha Godzilla, where they even bring in King Caesar. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And and That's- hey, man, Ready Player One. The 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 big bad at the end is is running that mech, so that's true. And he, yeah, this is a bonus one because uh, yeah, he got the Gundam fighting him. Yeah. So, uh, but that's that's my my last mech. The last one, jeez, you're slacking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else we got? Maybe, what- maybe something pop in my head when you guys when you guys say other stuff. Well, Rob, I think it's your turn. What what do you got next? Well, the uh, Matrix, Matrix when they're fighting, yeah. uh, all of them got into Zion or Zion. Uh, Zion, yeah, yeah, not Zion. That's from uh, Gundam. <laughs> uh, they, uh, yeah, they defend it. APUs or something. Yeah, APUs. Yep. And it's just them standing on a bridge, just firing all the bullets flying off, like the uh, <laughs> shell or the uh, casings coming down. Oh yeah. They get destroyed pretty quickly, but it is a pretty cool scene with the. Uh, the one captain fighting with the uh, with those things, screaming as he just shoots as many of the sentinels as he can before he gets overwhelmed. Is it Captain Mafuni, I think is yeah. his name was. Yep, yep. Oh, I so, remember one more. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it, uh, the Matrix movies, especially those ones, are maligned. But they did the. I think that was the third one, and it had uh, some yeah. really good scenes in that way. Like the actual story was a little weird, but. Uh, I did enjoy the action part of it, at least. Yeah, those those parts were pretty solid. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Brian? Uh, to to pull a, another one from uh, in the same vein as Chappie, District 9. Yep. Uh, the, the guy's running around near the end and grabbed one of the, the giant mech suits, and uh, I think it was an alien one, wasn't it? I forget. Uh, <laughs> it's an exosuit. I know that's what it's called, but I don't know. Uh, no. My my fun story with with District Nine is that uh, I I watched it when it was like first came on Netflix, and the subtitle track was like broken, oh. and so I never heard what the alien was saying. I I could only play <laughs> off what he was interpreting from it. That's funny. Uh, and it, it made for a very different movie experience because it made it seem like the <laughs> alien was really like. Trying to get rid of them or something. <laughs> like they weren't really working together that well. But, uh, but yeah, yeah that, that's another one. Yeah, they are alien suits. That's right. I'm looking at it now. If, once again, I haven't come back to that movie in a while, but that was a cool part. That movie's great too. Neil Bloom yeah, great, great sci-fi. I remember it, it really helped. I think that Peter Jackson helped produce that movie or, mm-hmm. or, or was a producer on that movie and, and kind of put his name on it because, those those South African films, like there's a a bunch of them, and they're really good sci-fi, uh, uh like fun movie romps, but uh, they they a lot of times don't get a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And hardcore sure. Henry. <laughs> if you had been uh, yeah. if you had been to Gen Con, you could have held the District Nine gun. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what a awesome. workshop. They have it. They have the actual prop in their booth. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah, that's the cool thing about uh, Gen Con. The, the uh, what are they, the, uh, Weta Workshop guys are actually there. Because they do have their game, uh, uh, Big Stompy Robot Game, what's it called? Giant Killer Robots. Giant Killer Robots. Yeah. And, yeah, so they're there for the Gen Con, but they, they do bring other stuff, which is fun. They have a District 9 game, though. Do they have a District 9 game, too? Mm-hmm. I was oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Sweet. Is it, more, is it more of a board game, or...? I think it's more of a board game. I have to look at it again. I haven't didn't mm. delved too much into it, but I knew they had a District 9 game coming out. Hmm. Or That'd out. Cool. I think they were demoing it at Gen Con. Huh. Neat. Pat, you thought of another one? What's the other one you thought of? I remember back in the 80s, uh, there was a, a sad attempt to do a live-action Appleseed OVA. Really? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I didn't and know had, that. And it had the robots from Appleseed in that. The mechs. I do the, love the, Appleseed mechs. What were they called? Landmasters or something like Land, that? Landmates. Landmates. I always liked that they had the arms, like the dual arms thing going. Yeah, that's uh, that's very similar to, uh, I think that's where um, Infinity got their tags from. Or very Appleseed-like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Dude, Shiro uh, Masamune's stuff is, is really cool with the mechs. 
I I had not heard that there was a live action yeah. one of that. I I do it love was, the anime. It, it was it was direct to video. The okay. anime is great. The one that's compute like I don't, I don't think it's computer generated. Yeah, it's really nice. I lo- I like that one a lot. But I didn't mm. know they tried to do a live action one. That's hilarious. Yeah. I think there's was, like I think, I think it came out in '88 or '89. Wow, I can believe it. That that's an old manga franchise. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's fun. The fun movies, Apple Seed, but yeah, might have to try to find the live action one, or should I avoid that? I, you know, I, honestly, I can't remember. I just know that the computer graphics were not the best. Yeah, but it was also 1988, so I think in '88 what we were looking at VGA was or EGA or SVGA was the <laughs> part at the time, <laughs> and 46 computers were the <laughs> yeah. No, in '88 that'd be more almost 386, wasn't it? It was early, yeah. That was yeah, that was a long time ago. I think it was around '90s when the 486s came out. There was there was no internet back then. I don't know if you kids can understand that. No internet. <laughs> no internet, no cell phones. You actually had to call. Nope. You had to actually call. You had to talk to people on a phone that was connected to the wall. Yep. You, well, no, I think we had we had uh, wireless phones by then. Mm, oh, yeah. Because I, I, I remember we had a big one that had like a, one of those Pelota antennas, like a walkie-talkie almost. <laughs> yeah, that was like, that was and cutting were, edge. And you, and you were cool if you had a beeper? Oh, uh, beepers! Yeah, I never. I uh, <laughs> no, I never had a beeper. I wasn't a drug dealer, I guess. <laughs> All right, we just turned into old men here. <laughs> uh it's my turn. I'm running out of things, but there is uh, some that are just uh, quick. It's is the uh, Hulkbuster from uh, Age of Ultron. It's pretty much mm-hmm. a mech. It's it's big enough to be a mech. <laughs> One thing, and, and, and all Iron Man is a mech. Sort of yeah. powered armor is that's when you're, you're getting when you're going to human sized, but the Hulk yeah, but Hulkbuster's you, big. You're 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 stepping on the foundation of Moss Pita business climber. <laughs> true, that's true. I yeah. guess so. But I, they have a I it turns into curious. a bike. <laughs> I was curious where we were kind of drawing the line because yeah. there's definitely some good movies with power armor in it. Yeah, that's like like there like that's that's close. I'll, I want to throw that one out there as many times as I can because more people should see that movie. Yes. Which which one? At Edge of Tomorrow. It's that Live Die Repeat with uh, Tom oh. Cruise. With Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. That is oh, a really good movie, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's yeah, the, it's yeah, a really the, good, really good movie. Those are max. That's like that's almost the same size as uh, the Power Loader from Aliens. I would think it's getting there, close. Yeah, it's it's a little 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 smaller, but it's it's a whole weapons harness. Like it's it's yeah, it's like a. You know the the book version of Starship Troopers, yeah. Right where it's. Well, that actually reminds me of Starship Troopers. The uh, cartoon was uh, they actually it was much more real to the books, mm. and they had the big powered armor the, or the big uh, mech suits that were in the uh, books originally. So there, that there you go. Watch, watch that cartoon. That's that's a classic. The uh, Starship Troopers cartoon. It's actually really good. It's way better than any of the movies. I think the the third movie's got those too. Oh, does it? And so does the fourth one. There you go. And the fifth one. I don't think I've I've seen any past the second one. Yes, so. I've seen, which is funny because the second one is is the worst. Yes, that's probably why I stopped watching. Which is funny when I go like the 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 first CG one uh, invasion is like the the second best Starship Troopers movie because <laughs> <laughs> it, it shows you where the bar is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but they they count as anime in my opinion, so I'm not counting them here. That's true. They're more anime. They're cartoons. You also so, get to yeah. I was just gonna say the the next one. I'll, I'll rattle off quick. RoboCop. Um, oh, at two hundred nine. At two hundred nine. Yeah. And, oh uh, yeah. The the baddie in the second one. Uh, yeah. The, like, yeah. The is, crazy guy. Yeah. Brain transplanted into a giant mech that Robocop has to fight. That's true. <laughs> Written by uh, Frank uh, Miller. That, that... <laughs> <laughs> Was that? Yeah. Oh, wow. I did I, not know that. Once again, he might have asked to have his name taken off of it. <laughs> it's Alice Smithy. <laughs> but, but yeah. uh, you know, Paul, Paul Verhoeven really, I think he really nailed it. I haven't seen the new one. I do want to give it a fair chance. I, I imagine it's quite different. Um, yeah, I haven't in, seen new Robocop. Yeah, in like message and whatnot, because 
the thing I, the big takeaway for me for the, the first Robocop was definitely is like the bad guys have already won. The evil corporations <laughs> are already in charge and there's very little our hero can do to stop that except fight crime. <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, Robocop. Also, uh, Oh, you got another one? Also, yeah, we can mention, uh, I haven't seen it in a while, but, uh, the next generation Pat Labor. That was a, a Japanese live action series of, based on Pat Labor. Yeah, I never saw those either. Yeah, they, they actually had built some mechs or some Ingrams. Nice. That's cool. So, that was 2015 when that came out. Huh, wow. Yeah, I'll have to check that out too. Yeah, there's some trailers floating around out there. I was going to say the, uh, from the first Iron Man, the Ironmonger, that thing is huge. And mm. that was another, like, once again, I probably, if you watch it now, it wouldn't hold up compared to all the new ones, but that was a good <laughs> fight scene with, between him and, uh, with Ironmonger? Iron, yeah. Yeah, Jeff, I, Jeff Bridges? I think, yeah, I think that was a good, I think that was a good, I think that'd still stand up. I, I don't know. I'm scared to go back to those early ones because I think, I think we've been spoiled by the newer ones. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, that one was, uh, a, had a good enough core to it, I think, to yeah. that really stood on its own. That's true. Uh, uh, so, do you have another one, Rob? I have uh, ones that I uh, I copied off of a, a website about a TV show <laughs> or a movie Max that will mention that I haven't seen. So we'll have to see if uh, any of you guys have seen them. But do you have another one that you've actually seen? Um, this one uh, kind of falls outside of the realms of movies, and I, I wanted to throw it out there, though. Um, The Legend of Korra, mm. uh, from the, the Avatar franchise, in the, the last season for Korra, uh, or actually throughout most of the Korra series, there's kind of these, these steampunk-esque, uh, mech suits that are, yeah. are rolling around. And in the, the big finale, there's actually a, like a giant mech that's running through the city. Um, which is is pretty awesome. Yeah, that that whole series, Avatar and uh, and Korra, a great series. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. that movie ruined Avatar. So, <laughs> not Avatar, James Cameron, Avatar: The Last Airbender by uh, Shyamalan. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was so bad. Yes, I know. I know it's not mech related, but they're the original creators of the the cartoon shows are are making a Netflix series, a uh, live action one. I hope it's good. And I, I I do too. I think they can do it right. Like, you know, they they obviously understood the heart of the show. And they're uh, big big anime fans. They they know how to do long form storytelling and mm-hmm. cuz that whole series is like one big story which is great. Yes. Yeah, well, that might wrap it up. The only ones I have that I have never heard of, there's something called Sentinel 2099 from 1995. It's got 40-foot tall walking tanks called Sentinels. Never heard of it. You guys ever hear this movie? That no. sounds rad. Who, bought, who put it out? I have no idea. I just... 5.2. <laughs> it seems like that's a uh, score for uh, mech movies. Yeah, yeah. Michael McGee was the director. <laughs> Jesus. Stars Sam Bishop, Chris Carlson, Daniel Duff, Todd Huffman, What's Leon Jester. Sentinel 99? 2099. Uh, 2099. Oh, no wonder I can't find it. Uh, There's like no credits for it and like who yeah, knows what I'm, this movie is. I'm like who? It doesn't say what the production company was. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so who neat. knows? Yeah, who knows that one? They, even like, a, even the cover doesn't even have like a. Uh, it doesn't say anything of like who made it or anything. <laughs> oh, there was a sequel. Wow. So there's that. Uh, what was the other one we got? <laughs> so uh, there's that. <laughs> uh, anybody ever see that animated film Nine? It's I think it's almost like that sock puppet kind of thing, or it's like a weird creature. I guess yeah, there's I, I, big war machines in that. Haven't seen it. I remember Coheed and Cambria did some of the music for it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. There, there's something called Steel Behemoths in that that fight it. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Two, the Rhino at the very end. It's pretty much a mech suit. I, yeah, I, I'm happy I'm, gonna... I'm not seeing that one. Yeah, that was horrible. It's a very short-lived scene. <laughs> yeah, it's the very end. And uh, uh, Lego Movie, I guess the the one of the characters makes a giant construction mech in it. Metal Beard. Oh. <laughs> yes. I'll count it. 
Uh, and we know, yeah, there's also things like, uh, well, we did mention, uh, um, Ready Player One that had a lot of, uh, mech action in that yep. at the end. And, um, uh, I always want to mention, <laughs> it's a cartoon, but it's, uh, um, Iron Giant, classic, big giant mm-hmm. robot. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can go way back to the 60s. I mean, that's all those were back in the 60s with, with the live action, like Johnny Sacco and his giant robot. Yeah, but you're getting into, yeah. You, well, you <laughs> did you did a lot of Japanese ones anyways, but those are pretty much pre-anime anime movies. Yeah. Which uh, is yeah. funny because one of the things I picked up the other day was uh, a set of Astro Boy for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Got a used disc store for three ninety nine. Nice. <laughs> So I think that wraps it up. Anything else, guys? No, I think it was interesting. I mean, we learned about app, uh, a yeah, gun an head apple and seed. an apple seed and uh, what was the other one? Atlantic Rim. Atlantic yeah. Rim and Sentinel yeah. 2099. I can't yeah. wait for that. I can't wait for the sequel <laughs> for, apple, for uh, uh, Atlantic, Atlantic Rim. Atlantic Rim 2. <laughs> so we'll uh, get to the X-Fill and we'll get out of here. Okay. Good. <laughs> Atlantic Rim. Let's exfil out of here. Well, we're coming to the end of this episode, number five. Who's next week? I don't even know. I don't know. Mr. I think I am. Are you? Yeah, it's, it's Ryan's turn. Yeah, because I was last week. Yeah, there yep. you go. Last month, yeah. So, uh. <laughs> last, last week. Time not, flies. Not yet. Not We're not weekly yet. <laughs> but uh yes can't wait to see what we bring up next week do you have any idea what you're gonna have as a main topic yet brian i i think i i do have one that'll be uh kind of interesting because it, it'll be a little different than uh than what Ooh. we usually talk about so nice i'm excited for it i know it's not the robotech versus macross one i've been hinting at wanting to do at some point <laughs> Or uh, Chibis <laughs> versus regular X. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep threatening to do that one. <laughs> oh, my God. I've got a bunch of Chibi ones, man. There's going to be a bunch of rage coming out of me. <laughs> oh, that, that might be fun. Maybe I will do Chibi next time I come around. <laughs> they're, they're fun to scrounge for Strider parts. Yes, they're the right scale for that, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I should have more talking about Striders. Uh, for Dead Zone, we are... Redoing the rules for uh, Mech Zone for AdeptCon, so I think I'll have a lot more to talk about that. Hopefully next time. We'll see about that. Sweet. And, uh, yeah. Inside. Scoops, yep. Yep. Uh, if you check out Giga Robo. Yep, Giga Robo. Check out Cav. Check out, uh, what's that other game? Gunframe. Gun yep. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Do come to our our Facebook group. It is uh, Mobile Armor Radio on Facebook. Just search for that. You can go to get merch at either shop.spreadshirt.com slash mobile armor radio for t-shirts. Or you can go to zazzle.com slash mobile armor radio for a bunch of other stuff, including the mugs, which we love. Mm -hmm. And They're uh, They're hefty mugs. They're not the little... 10, 10 ounce mugs. These are like the nice 14 ounce mugs, so you can get a good cup of Joe in there. Nice. Yeah. And if anybody uh, is interested in uh, posting stuff, please do post on the Facebook. We like seeing what you're working on. We, a lot of people are posting games that they found, different games. And uh, yeah, and those are awesome. If you are a game creator, get a hold. Get a hold of us. We'll we'll gladly have you on to talk about stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we'll try. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of new stuff coming out. There, oh, uh, Robotech just came out with their, uh, beta rules for the new RPG. So check that out and hope to influence the production of that. Is it the RPG, an actual RPG or? Yes, it's the RPG that's coming out. That's, the actual yeah. role playing game. Yep. I'm actually pretty excited. It seems like there's been a huge. Who's uh, their publisher now? Yeah, who's doing that? I don't know. <laughs> we we prepare a lot for this show. Uh, well, I, I just know, thought I, of it just now, but well, yeah, I just yeah. thought it was dead because of what happened with the Palladium, the game Palladium, and all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a new new publisher. It's not Palladium anymore. I'm yeah. trying to figure out who it is. SMG seems... Role Playing Games. That's who does it, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, so it seems like there's been a lot of uh, 
a, a lot of uh, Robotech games and and content coming out lately, which is pretty cool. Good for good for them. I know I know Robotech has kind of been starved for new stuff. <coughs> well, it was only it was, I mean because there's only one person that had that, and it yeah. was Palladium, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, yeah. Harmony Gold. Harmony Gold. I mean, Harmony Gold licensed Palladium. I mean. They all, they, the same company is the one that's doing the attack on SDF1 game, which is cool. Right, right. That one I'm pretty excited for. That looks like yeah. a lot of fun. So, interesting. Yes, that's a preview of that at Gen Con, which Lucky. it, it had, uh, it had cool, cool stuff. Giant, uh, cardboard SDF1, which is awesome. That is definitely a, a one that I'm interested in picking up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't wait for that to come out. But there's tons of games coming out, uh, the uh, that uh, Met, uh, Robo- uh, Monster Apocalypse has big stompy robots in that fighting monsters from yeah. uh, Privateer Press. I think makes that one. So I'm looking more into that. I just I didn't uh, I didn't realize there was any robots in that. So uh, yeah, if anybody uh, like I said, post the games up in our forums, and if you know anybody, get a hold of us. We'll have you on. Like we had the, uh, John Walker from Cav on, and we'll have him back on to talk about the uh, Kickstarter. Maybe another point five episode. Yeah, because pretty soon that'll Good be guy. out in retail. Guy, oh yeah, mm-hmm. Pat keeps hitting them up for uh, for questions about the game. <laughs> yeah, how to play. Oh, but, these uh, come up. Yeah, well, that's good. It's good to have a. Uh, that's why everybody hates uh, Facebook, but it's a great place to have uh, interactions with these kind of people. So it's I'm I'm happy to do it. And uh, yeah. Please come back next time for Mobile Arm Radio Episode 6, and we'll have a good time. Yes, we will. I've been Rob. I've been Brian. And I've been Chopper. Bye-bye. Have a nice night, everybody. Bye-bye. This has been Mobile Armor Radio. Join our Facebook group by searching for Mobile Armor Radio. Find us on Twitter at Radio. Find us on iTunes and visit our website, mobilearmorradio.podbean.com. Join us on the first of every month for more mecha discussion.